Hey guys, welcome back. We were given yet another weekly update for Dead Matter as of July 17th. So in this video, we'll be looking at the main points for discussion in this update. And as always, we'll be taking a more detailed look at some of the mechanics behind Dead Matter. This week, that will be character creation and customization. Before we get started, I want to say a quick thank you for everybody that has dropped by the Twitch stream lately. It's been great meeting so many of you, and I look forward to meeting many more in the future, especially when the day comes that we can stream Dead Matter live. With that out of the way, let's jump into the update. First and foremost, the update on the closed alpha release. Although we have no confirmation of the roadblock or when we might see it removed, according to the team, it is now nearly resolved. Reggie has also made a note that the team have implemented additional measures to prevent it from coming up again in the future, especially after launch. Their full focus now is on making sure that key infrastructure is in place for the launch for closed alpha. A new date will be announced in the near future according to this update, so we have that to look forward to. Finally, Reggie thanks everyone for showing the patience they have so far and how excited the team are to dive into the alpha with backers. We get a fairly juicy insight into Nick's work this week, so I'm going to look at this section of the update before anyone else's this time around. Nick has been working on a lip sync system, which he notes was a bit of a side project over the last couple of weeks. Currently, audio is pre-processed externally before being brought into Unreal Engine 4 for playback which means that the team don't have to capture facial animation data, externally process and clean it up whilst maintaining a result that's considered acceptable. I'll admit it's a little technical for me but to understand, but it's great to know that the NPCs we'll be interacting with will have a bit of life to them when we're speaking with us. The next thing I'm going to show you is also a product of Nick's recent development work and also my main focus for this video. We've been showing the character creation menu fully polished, the last time we saw the character creation menu was back in vlog number two, which was quite some time ago and looked very different. The improvements are huge and I have to say I'm really looking forward to the style of creation they have in place right now. If any of you have played Project Zomboid, I'm sure you'll be able to draw a few similarities here. Now, before that's taken the wrong way, I'm all for this system being used, and I genuinely think it adds another layer of depth that will affect gameplay in a very positive way. So, when choosing our character, we'll be able to choose from a list of occupations that will affect our character's starting equipment and attributes. The attributes follow a pretty familiar format, including agility, charisma, endurance, intelligence, and stamina. Your character will also come with a set of skills varying in expertise. In the snippet of footage we've been given, this includes cooking, farming, mechanic, crafting, lock picking, and medical. Lastly, and this is where my reference to Project Zomboid comes in, we'll be able to select perks for our character. This is a really cool system which allows you to select a perk that makes a particular task easier. For example, you might have the perk Jogger to increase your agility. I imagine this will increase the speed of your running. Uh, in doing so, however, you'll use perk points. Sometimes you'll need to take a negative perk in order to make the points level out at zero, such as the perk Peanut Allergy or Awful Cook. I think the names of the perks speak for themselves on that one. Uh, each occupation choice comes with a different allocation of perk points to help balance them against each other, so it'll be cool to see how we interact with these. Having seen how this part of character creation works, I think it's going to be a really interesting aspect of the game. When we're composing groups with friends, it'll become important to try and cover as many bases as possible and promote playing in some form of group, which I'm all for. I'm personally not one for roleplay servers myself, but I imagine this will play quite well into the side of the player base as well to, to define your character and their backstory, if that makes sense. The only part of character creation that needs to be finished at this stage is the character appearance customization screen. Nick makes a note in this update that he'll be working on this over the weekend, so hopefully that's something we can expect in the very next update. We've already seen some sneak peeks of this in past updates, so it'll be interesting to see how this actually looks in the very near future. Now, moving on to the rest of the team, Kyle has been working on lockable vehicles in time for the closed alpha. He's also arranged an in-game feedback menu to allow players to effortlessly send feedback direct to the development team, which will be incredibly important, I'm sure, as we progress through the alpha. 
Server whitelisting has been added, Nomad's fortifications have been implemented into the game by Kyle, as well as safe zones having measures that force players to lower their weapon upon entry, as well as making them invulnerable to damage, which I cannot stress the importance of enough. Lastly, Kyle has been polishing random vehicle spawning and has squashed numerous bugs. Nomad has been working on polishing up fortification and utility assets that were shown off in the last update. We've been given some updated images of these this week, showing off various ways to fortify a door, both locked and unlocked. The water collector shown last week has gotten an art pass that includes an upgrade to add insulation to protect your water from freezing temperatures, which is a cool layer of depth as well. Lastly, a small portable heater has been added to help regulate temperature of player greenhouses throughout the year. Gunschlinger's main work has been focused on polishing animal behavior this week, including the bear AI in previous update posts. Riz has been busy with the katana, having implemented yet another model that can be found in-game. It's hard to tell in this image, but if you look closely, you can see the blade is actually engraved with this model, which is pretty awesome. Dogtooth has been working further on player clothing models and high poly models for the player jerseys, as well as blend maps for emotes, speaking transitions, and emotions. And last but certainly not least, Yitz has been working with the gun range. This gun range has been shown in previous footage in vlogs and blog posts, but it's now been polished and added to the game itself so that players can test various weapons. You'll notice in one of these photos that a fire alarm trigger is actually laying on a table, which triggers self-loading targets that will give us something to shoot at. Another very small detail, but something that will no doubt add to the experience. That's it from me this week guys, but if you're enjoying these updates, feel free to drop a like for this video and subscribe to the channel for more Dead Matter stuff. I'll be covering this game in detail both before and after release, so if you're hoping to see some gameplay in the future, you can bet you'll find some on my channel not long after the NDA is removed. Have a good one folks, and I will see you all in the next one.